today on DC News Now. Two arrested and a Virginia State Trooper injured in an early morning crash. I'll have the details on what led up to the incident. Skies filled with sunshine and we're tracking a major warm up. Police are investigating a triple shooting here outside of this District Heights market. The search for the person responsible. Moments from now, we are still tracking what you'll pay and three popular DMV supermarkets, another grocery price check. You're watching the station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. Good afternoon and thank you for joining us for the news at noon on Mark Hall. Before we get to those stories, we are following breaking news. President Joe Biden's son, Hunter Biden, has been found guilty on all three felony charges in a federal gun trial. Now, jurors found him guilty of lying on a mandatory gun purchase form in 2018, saying that he was not a drug user and illegally had the gun for 11 days. Hunter faces up to 25 years in prison. President Biden said that he would accept the results of the verdict and not seek to pardon his son. This isn't the only trial that we'll see this year. In September, he will be in court for charges of failing to pay $1.4 million in taxes. Well, new details about that crash on the Beltway that hurt a state trooper. A domino-like series of crashes eventually ending with that trooper being hit by a car whose driver they were trying to engage. DC News Now's Jean-Marie Sasse is near the crash scene with the latest on the investigation. Yeah, so the incident happened on 495 northbound near Little River Turnpike. And honestly, this was just a domino effect involving multiple vehicles that ended up injuring a state trooper. Just take a look at what the scene looked like early Tuesday morning. It happened shortly after 3 a.m. Now, according to police, the state trooper was dispatched to 495 because a sedan was stopped in one of the lanes. As the trooper was trying to get the driver to move over to the shoulder, a Jeep crashed into a tractor trailer and spun around hitting the trooper's patrol car, which then hit the sedan the trooper was helping and ultimately hit the trooper. Now, the trooper suffered minor injuries and was taken to the hospital. And the driver of the sedan who was inside the car when it all happened also had minor injuries and was arrested for driving under the influence of drugs. And as for the Jeep, the car that crashed into the tractor trailer and later the trooper, that driver was arrested for driving under the influence. Now, just as a reminder, Virginia does have a move over law, which does require drivers to move over to the next lane when they do see a vehicle with their hazards on red, blue or amber lights or even flares surrounding the vehicle. And if you can't move over, it's best to slow down. For now, reporting in Annandale, Virginia, I'm Yamari Sasse, DC News Now. Yeah, Marie, thank you. Meteorologist Damon Madsen joins us now with the latest check on the forecast. Damon, one word for you, comfortable. Oh, we love to hear that, right, Mark? <laughs> In the month of June, my goodness, this weather has been something else to enjoy, of course, over the last few days. And folks, we're continuing that so far on this Tuesday. Overnight temperatures, pretty comfortable. Overall, we had our typical warmer spots. I put that in quotations because, yeah, the low 60s, still a little bit on the cool side for mid June, but we had 64 in DC, 65 Annapolis. You found those temperatures staying more in the 60s to the east, but then to the west, a little bit chilly for some. How about the 50s up and down the I-81 corridor back into the Allegheny front? And we are just slowly starting to warm up from there because we had a lot of cloud cover over much of the DMV early this morning. That is now starting to break up and give way to plenty of sunshine. So we have a good mix of 60s and 70s. 70s, but as we enjoy more of that sunshine over the next several hours, everybody will end up back into the middle and upper 70s before the day is done. And that is not bad at all. Again, given the time of year, it is going to feel extremely comfortable. We'll still have some clouds mixed in with that sun, but we should expect to see a little more of that clear sky as the day goes on. Now, this comfortable weather, it's short lived. Changes are coming. We'll talk about how much our temperatures are set to rise over the next few days coming up here in just a bit. All right, Damon, thank you. The Montgomery County Board of Education is set to vote on its budget proposal today. County educators are protesting the budget. They say that the proposal will remove jobs and hurt students. DC News Now's Kevon Dupree is there covering the protest. Parents and students have gathered here in front of the MCPS Board of Education building to fight to keep the Montgomery Virtual Academy open for next school year. 
when the public school's budget for next year was announced last month. MCPS says the funding wasn't enough, and they'd have to consider cutting programs like the Virtual Academy. This has left students in that program devastated. It's very important to me be, to be online virtually because um, it, it just gives me peace knowing that I can talk to teachers in, on Zoom, like while they're in chat. MCPS also said they may have to make teacher cuts, but they recently announced that is no longer the case. We feel like it's important to secure the teachers' jobs. You know, they do so much. I mean, it's um, their jobs are really important. The vote to approve the final budget for fiscal year 2025 is scheduled to take place at 1.45 this afternoon. We'll have the result of that vote for you on DC News Now at 4 o'clock. Reporting in Rockville, I'm Kevon Dupree, DC News Now. Uh, Kevon, thank you. DC police are looking for the person who shot a man near the Minnesota Avenue Metro Station in Northeast. It happened shortly after 10 last night. They say the man was breathing when they found him. He was taken to a hospital. No word on his current condition. Both D.C. police and Metro Transit police are investigating the shooting. Police also searching for a car allegedly connected to a shooting early yesterday morning. Police say that a man and a woman were shot on 24th Street and Northeast near the intersection with uh, Benning Road. Uh, they were taken to the hospital, but police are not releasing their condition. The surveillance camera caught what police believe is the suspect vehicle. If you have any information, you're asked to contact police. One person is dead, two other people hurt after a shooting outside of a District Heights grocery store yesterday. Police still searching for whoever is responsible. DC News Now's Liberty Zabala is in the 5400 block of Marlboro Pike with the latest. Well, you can expect several customers to feel a bit uneasy after bullets riddled this parking lot behind me and police even had to lay down at least 90 evidence markers here as well as they work to search for the shooter or shooters who did this. Prince George's County Police Department rushed to the triple shooting here just after 3 p.m. Monday in the neighborhood of Coral Hills. They found a man in his 20s shot. They tried life-saving measures, but he died at the scene. Now, the shooting happened right outside the Fresh Market 24-7. Police say a woman in her 50s was hit. She was rushed into surgery. They also say a man in his 60s was also injured by the gunfire. But police did not have an update on his injuries. The market and neighboring streets, Brooks Drive and Walker Mill Road were closed off for several hours during the investigation. One man said he was across the street when he heard the shots fired. My back was turned and I just heard pop, 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 but it's afternoon hot and next you know, I was like, it's real and I just ran in the building. Police have not yet released any suspect information at this time, but they are urging anyone with information to come forward. For now, in District Heights, Liberty Zabala, D.C. News Now. All right, Liberty, thank you. Happening today, Montgomery County Council members are expected to interview police chief mandate, police chief candidate, pardon me, Mark Yamada. He is uh, County Executive Mark Elrich's nominee to lead the department. Yamada has been working with the Montgomery County Police Department for the last 35 years. That includes three years as the assistant chief. Outgoing Chief Marcus Jones is retiring at the end of the month, and he's been with the department for the last five years. If approved, Yamada would become the first Asian American to lead the department. Well, Loudoun County is looking for developers for its program to fund affordable housing. Developers can apply for a loan from the county, which will go toward preserving affordable multifamily rental units. Now, one applications are, when, once applications are approved by the County Board of Supervisors, developers will be certified for a year. The deadline to apply for the loan is Thursday, August 1st. And Maryland's Public Services Commission denying more than a half of PEPCO's rate increase request. It authorized a $44 million rate increase for one year. The company requested a plan for more than $116 million in the first year, and that would increase to over $200 million by 2027. Public Services Commission says that this will increase the average bill by $5.72 each month. And we continue to track prices at the grocery store to help you fight back against inflation. We can anchor Ben Dennis is stretching your dollar by helping you decide where to shop. 
foods are still in the details. We've identified 10 grocery essentials at three popular local stores, sizing up how much they cost compared to one another and to keep more cash in your wallet. Another week, another chance to save. The USDA expects grocery prices will keep rising this year, though at a faster pace when dining out. Meantime, our price tracking at Walmart, Giant, and Safeway continues to identify disparities between 10 pantry essentials. Why do we do it? Help you make your own choice where to shop. So, what's changed in the past week? Lowest prices online show a 2% gallon of milk got $1.60 more expensive at Safeway. 12 brown eggs up $3 there. One pound of ground beef increased $2.20 at Safeway. Chicken breast per pound at Giant, that's up $2. Avocado rose 66 cents and eggs went up 79 cents. Walmart's prices changed the least and avocado up just 32 cents. 2% 2 gallon of milk, 13 cents. And between the three, here's what's cheapest at Walmart. Nine out of 10 of our pantry essentials to start the week. Giant wins for a one pound tray of ground beef. Safeway in the back of the pack, comparatively. Though their wheat bread and russet potatoes are cheaper here than at Giant. And of course, certain apps can grant cash back for groceries like Ibotta, Fetch, for example. Go a step further with those digital coupons and store loyalty programs for discounts once you reach the register. Ben Dennis, back to you.